No revealing clothes and no rite of passage. Now, these are the kind of orders that are addressed to women in Jerusalem's ultra-Orthodox neighborhoods. So four female activists who had had enough decided to go to court to force a change. This is a synagogue. These signs tell women to refrain from passing on the sidewalk. Right behind us, right there, is a large sign, threatening, offensive sign, that tells me exactly what I need to wear. And in this area, I and other women have been attacked. Israel's ultra-Orthodox minority has a pool far greater than its numbers. It dictates to the country's Jewish community who can marry and where women can pray. Many say change is inevitable and is already on the horizon. Violence against women could be seen to be embedded in wider issues around gender inequality. It stems from a system that denies women their rights and a system that discriminates against women. It stems then from inequality and from patriarchal control. There's different levels we need to look at when we're thinking about violence, the international level, the national level, but the intimate level. It encompasses all those different levels and it encompasses many different notions around why violence exists. And again, on different levels. So we can look at it in terms of it exists because there's no national laws or it exists because of men. It exists because of the systems that are in place. When we think about violence against women and girls, when we think about why it occurs, we can look at psychological factors and we can also look at patriarchal factors. We can also look at triggers. And it's important to separate them out. When you talk to women about violence and why or in what context they suffer violence, then they often talk about alcohol abuse or alcohol misuse. And they see that as the cause. But that, of course, isn't the cause. That's an outcome of wider issues. So we need to be careful to separate out what are triggers and what are root causes. Violence against women is a universal. There's no one class where violence doesn't exist. It exists across incomes. We need to be very careful that we do not construct it as a poverty issue. We need to make sure that we see it as a societal issue that cuts across all societies and all peoples. Now, we can see triggers. And there's a number of triggers, alcohol, for example. But we need to think about, well, why are men drinking too much alcohol? Why the abuse of alcohol? So we need to go back a step from that. And one of the issues people point to in terms of triggers is that men cannot fulfill the societal role they've been given. The role that men have traditionally had in society is being questioned their ability to fulfill it. When we're talking about the crisis of masculinity, what we're talking about then is increasing male unemployment, for example. More women in entering the labour force, more women having decision-making roles. And if men cannot fulfill their societal role, then we get crisis and we get frustration. And that may be a trigger. On the other hand, the trigger may come from women. Not to suggest women are to blame, but that then women are seen to be challenging male power. So if the man doesn't have a job and a woman does have a job, this may seem to be a challenge. There's some very interesting research from Australia that highlights that as women earn more money on a par with men, so in the home, women and men share domestic responsibilities more. But when women earn over a certain amount, they start taking on more domestic responsibilities. Why? So as not to challenge the male role within the household as head. So what we see then, triggers may come from these changes in gender roles and relations. Something we're pushing for across the globe, good change can also bring about these other issues. So when we're looking at violence against women, we need to look at these triggers, but we also need to look back and think, well, what are the root causes? Some people may suggest that men are born prone to violence. This is a problematic idea. This would suggest that every man you know could potentially be violent. Feminists prefer to think about violence as being learned, as being socialized, because that means it can change. And this is really what we want. When we think about why men are violent, three aspects have been highlighted. The first is around this notion of impaired masculinity. Impaired masculinity implies that Boys who grow up in abusive situations or witness abuse or witness violence may be more likely to be violent in turn when they get older. The second issue is more around assessment or the patriarchal system. So it's more around these challenges to male power. And here, with the fundamental shifts in gender roles and relations may lead to conflict and violence. 
And the third one is more around external factors. Now here we've got to be very careful about that because these external factors could be poverty, for example. And we don't want to construct violence against women as being an issue around poverty. But we do know that wider situations of violence, political violence, conflict, war and disasters can actually lead to more violent acts. Often when we look at violence, we're thinking about intimate partner violence and at the hands of knowns. We also need to bear in mind that, that violence and the threat of violence is used to keep women in the place they're in. And often this is the threat of violence from unknown men. And this is interesting because how many times, again, any women listening, how many times has it been suggested to you, don't go there, it's dangerous? If that's been suggested to you, we need to think, who are these men lurking around in corners about to attack you? Because surely they must be someone that someone knows. It's more likely you'll suffer violence at the hands of someone you know than someone you don't know. But these constructions as dangerous spaces, as other men that are likely to attack you, keep women in the home. And this is important because when women are on the streets, this is seen to be a problem in many cultures. In Latin American culture, it's the notion of the woman on the street, even if she's going to work. And then they're policed by other men and other women through gossip through talk. And that's why violence is such an important issue to address. Because it's not just about the physical pain, it's not just about fear, it's about autonomy and it's about mobility. And it's about limiting women's life chances and girls' life chances. And it's also about addressing all the interconnected rights and needs that women have. Economic, sexual, reproductive and the right to live free from violence.